In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called LRU cash. So we want to design a data structure that follows the constraints of a least recently used or else LRU cache. So basically, this LRU cache is a um, is a policy, right? Where um, we want to keep the most recent items that uh, or most frequently used items in our cache. If there's an item that we don't use, right? If we exceed the current uh, capacity of our cache, and we have to remove all the items that we don't use, right? So let's say we want to insert one insert two, insert three, but the capacity here in this case is only two. So that, that means that we have to remove the element that doesn't, that, that uh, we want to keep the items that we recently, uh, that, we, that we use most frequently, right? We want to remove the least recently used. In this case, the least recently used is going to be one because we insert this item first and we have to keep the capacity of two. So in this case, we have two and three, right? Those elements inserted after element one so element one should be removed and then we should only keep one and three right if we have a capacity of two so if i were to insert one more item it's kind of like a queue right so in this case if i were to uh, insert another item like four right in this case we have to remove the least used item in this case it's going to be two and then if i were so now currently we have three and four right in our cache so if I want to um, get an item, right? So in this case, the most frequently used item so far is four because we insert four last, right? The last activity was uh, insertion, uh, insert four. And if I were to uh, send a get request, right? To get three, in this case, the, the, the most frequently used item is now three, right? Because we the last activity was getting a key, getting an element that's, equal to three. So those are a couple of methods that we're going to have, that we're going to design in the LRU cache, right? We have a constructor that defines our capacity. And we also have a get method where, uh, where we're going to return the value of a key if the key exists. Otherwise, we're going to return negative one. So, and we also have another method that uh, put, right? We basically either updates or insert this item, right? We have a key, we have a value. And we basically update the value of the key if the key exists. Otherwise, the key add the key value pair to the cache. The number of key uh, keys exists the uh, sorry exceeds the capacity from the operation evict the least uh, recently used key. So we want to remove the least recently used or a, a key value pair that we don't really use. Uh, that we uh, in this case least reason uh least frequently used right so how can we solve the problem and you can see that the the goal for this is we want to do this in a constant time complexity for getting the element and insertion and um, um, update elements right so in this case let's take a look at how we can do this problem so to solve this problem we we know that we have to use a data structure that can support constant time right, constant time complexity for getting and retrieving elements. So that looks something like a hash table, right? We can be able to uh, save the element onto a table and retrieve that element from a, from a table in constant time on average for time complexity. So now we know, now we figured that out, uh, figure out how we can do that, but how can we be able to um, keep the most frequently accessed elements uh, in our data structure within our capacity, right? So you can see we, are, we have an example here. We have a capacity of two. We insert one, we insert two. And then when we get one, now the most frequent access or the most frequently used uh, key value pair is gonna be one instead of two, right? So now if I were to uh, insert three and three, then in this case, the key, uh, the least recently used key will be is going to be two so we're going to delete two out of our cache so now we have one and three left so how do we keep track of that well we have a couple options here we have queue we have a stack we have even linked list right we have an array so how do we know which one should we use so a queue basically is the first in first out of the structure right so the first element in is the first element that we're going to remove out of our queue so in this case, if I have a table, right? In this case, let's draw it out. 
Um, if I have a table and um, I first insert one, then I insert two, and then if I want to get one, right? So, so far I have a queue, I have one, I have a two. This is the first item and this is the second item. And then in this case, uh, if I want to ins uh, get one, right? I basically have to switch the order. So basically I can delete this item, right? I can delete this item and add it, uh, basically switch the order around so that we have two here and one is here, right? And this will basically give us a linear type complexity for making this modification. Because what if I have items like this, one, two, three, four, and I want to switch the order, I want to switch this order, uh, those two elements order, then in this case, if I were to insert element, we're going to insert last, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a linear time complexity for making this kind of modification. So what we can do instead is we can use a doubly linked list. And if we were to use a doubly linked list, this will make a lot of sense. Let me show you why. Um, so same thing here, if I have only just one and two, right? In this case, if I have one, two, okay? So we're actually going to uh, is do it this way, where we have no two here and no one is right here. Uh, the reason is that we're going to insert no two first, and then we're gonna, uh, sorry, we're gonna insert no one first, and then when we insert no to the to this double link list, we're going to insert to uh, between the dummy head node and the head node, right? We're gonna insert to the head, so that we're gonna give us uh, give us a a constant time complexity. Instead of insert to the tail node, uh, we're gonna insert it to the head node. And in this case, we're gonna have a dummy head node, okay? And we're also gonna have a dummy uh, tail node. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep the most frequently accessed element to be closer to the head node, to dummy head node. And the, the least uh, frequently accessed element is going to be usually, uh, uh, is usually gonna be located around the tail node. Right. If I want to call this method to get uh, key one, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to, of course, we're going to return no one. But the thing is that we're going to delete this node and then we're going to place this node between the dummy head node and the head node. Right. We're going to insert this node to the head. OK. And this will give us a constant time complexity because we know where that node is located. Because in our table, we're going to have a key, which is an integer, right? This, this key right here is an integer. And the value in this case is going to be a list node, a list node or a doubly linked list node. doesn't matter, right? So in this case, we can retrieve that node. And once we retrieve that node, we can be able to figure out where that node is. And then we can delete this node. And to delete this node, right, if I were to delete this node, I can get the current node of pre points to the current node.nest. And current node.nest dot pre is equal to the current node dot previous node, right? We're going to get those two nodes pointing back and forth. So we're going to get those two nodes pointing at each other. We're deleting those connection. And then we're going to uh, insert this item where we insert this node between the, the, the dummy head node and the head node. And this will give us a constant time complexity because we don't have to search where that node is. We can use a hash table to do that. And once we've done this part, what we can do is we can just, uh, when we, uh, it will give us something like this, right? We're going to have, um, at the end, we're going to have something like this, where we have no one is right here and no two is right here. And if I want to insert no three, it's going to be dummy head node. We can have no three. And no three is going to point to no one. And no one is going to point to no two. And no two is pointing to the tail node, right? And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to, because we know that we exceed the size, so what we can do is we can re uh, remove the, um, let's also put three here. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the um, the adjacent, uh, the, the previous node of the dummy tail node. So in this case, it's going to be the tail node that we have. In this case, it's going to be node two. So we remove node two, and uh, this will give us only two elements that we have. In our um, in our in our list, right? So in our doubly linked list, right? So that's why we use a doubly linked list is that we can be able to retrieve the previous node in a constant time, right? So then 
once we done that, we if we were to get if we were to call this method, so we pass in key two, it will return negative one, right? If if, it, if, it, if we cannot find that element, it's going to be negative one. And if we were to insert four, right? If we were to insert four, then in this case, the same thing. We're going to um, insert it between the dummy head and the and the head node, right? So we're going to insert right here, and we have dummy head and then no four and no three and no one and because no one is the tail node so we're going to delete it because we exceed the size so we have dummy tail node here and then if i were to get one in this case we cannot find it if i were to get three i can find it if i were to get four i can find it and make sure every time when we delete a node we want to make sure we also update our table as well right so in this case one and two are all gone right so now let's take a look at how we can do this in code so to do this in code basically here i create a class called doubly link list or doubly link uh, list node which has a uh, integer key and integer value as well as a previous node and the nest node right so it's doubly link list we want to have the current node points to the previous node as well as the nest node and then we have a class called uh, least recently used cache right and then we're going to have a map um, a table that basically stores uh, each uh, key and their node in our uh, double link list. Um, and then we also have a capacity that stores how uh, what's our current capacity for a cache, as well as the head and the tail node, or in this case, yeah. So in this case, we're going to have, uh, initially we're going to have the, the dummy head node and the dummy tail node points to each other, okay? And that's what we did in our constructor. And we're also going to have a couple methods here. So those are private methods. And this is our get and our put method. Those are the two main methods. So in our get method, right, we take a key and then we're going to see if we can be able to find it in our in our uh, table. If we can if we if we cannot find it, then we're going to return negative one. Otherwise, we're going to um, basically uh, move the current node to the head node, right? Insert it to the head node. And then we're going to return node.value, which is the actual value of this key, right? And then inside our move to head method, you can see it takes this um, doubly list node, right, which is a node. We first remove that node, and then we add this node to the head. So let's take a look at this remove node, where it takes, where, where it takes this node, and we basically set prev is equal to node.pre, nest is equal to node.nest, right? And then pre.nest is equal to nest, and nest.pre is equal to pre. So the idea is simple. We have a previous node, we have a current node, we have a nest node. So in this case, we are going to get the previous node points to current.nest, and, uh, and the nest node point, uh, dot pre is equal to uh, current node.pre, right? So, and we're just deleting this connection here. We're setting node.pre is equal to null, and node.nest is equal to null. You don't really have to do this part, but I'm just doing it here to show you, right? So in this case, once we've done that, we remove the current node off the link list, and then we're gonna use the same node to add to the head. So you can see we have add to the head method, which takes a doubly link uh, uh, list node, and then we're just gonna set pre is equal to head, and nest is equal to head.nest. We're inserting between head and head.nest. So pre.nest is equal to node, and node.pre is equal to pre. And then we also have to uh, do it backwards as well. So in this case, nest.pre is equal to node and node.nest is equal to nest, right? So in this case, we're going to uh, form this connection where we insert it to the head. Okay, so where are we? Now we're going to have, um, yeah, so we're going to return this node value. And then we also have another method where we put, where we take the key and the value, we first find that node. In this case, if we cannot find the node, uh, we're just going to, in this case, we're going to create an instance of that node and then new node.key is equal to key, new node.value is equal to value, right? We, we're basically either, um, yeah, in this case, we're just creating a node and we update their, their keys and values. And then we're going to add that in our table as well. And then we're going to add to the head. And once we add to the head, we get, we're going to check to see if the, the size of our cache is actually bigger than the capacity. If it's exceeds our capacity, then we're going to delete the tail node because we know, just like I demonstrated before, the tail node 
is the node that's uh, that's LRU, right? It's going to be the least frequently used elements. So we're going to we want to make sure we delete that. And once we delete that in our linked list, we also have to delete that in our table as well. So once we've done that, and this is basically how we how we do it, right? So and there could also be a situation where we um, well, let's take a look at this remove tail node method. So you can see this remove tail node method. It gave us the previous node, right? The tail node. We call this remove node, right? And then we just return this node right here. Um, and, and then what we're going to do is we also got to remove that in our table. And otherwise, if we have a situation where we know that this is the node that, we, um, that we're going to update, right? So we're going to update a value. And then we're going to move this node to the head node. So in this case, we have move to the head, which we just talked about. We remove the, the node and add it to the head, right? So pretty much those are all the methods that we had to go over, right? And uh, let's take a look at how we can, well, let's run our code. And uh, let's try to submit our code. And you can see we have our success. So this is how we solve this problem. Um, and the time complexity in this case is going to be constant for um, retrieving items and update and insertion. Okay, so there you have it, and thank you for watching.